Hi, my name's Frank. I am interested in World War II flight instruments. I find them in pawn stores, flea markets, antique stores, wherever. Here's some examples I found over the years. This is an altimeter, airspeed indicator, a compass, a vacuum gauge, and another airspeed indicator. Well, recently I found this guy in Kingman, Arizona, in an eclectic military store. So I was very interested and I asked the store owner, well, how's it work? And he says, you don't even want to know. Wrong. I do want to know. This video is about me building an implementation and making this thing come to life. So I hope you enjoy it. When I first picked up this thing, I was curious, well, what does it do? How does it work? What's it for? Well, the first clue is right on the face. It says radio compass. Well, we all know what a regular compass does. It points to magnetic north. Well, a radio compass points to a radio station and it can be used for navigation. In use, Aircraft navigator would set this indicator to the direction that they were flying by rotating this knob. Next, they would take a bearing on a radio station with a directional loop antenna, which would be indicated by this arrow. And that way they would have two lines that intersected and know their exact location. Well, the heart of this thing is what's called a cell thin self-synchronizing servo motor generator pair. And that's what the implementation is all about. So let's get busy. I mentioned cell sync, self-synchronizing motor generator pairs. Here's what they look like. This is a transmitter. This is the receiver and they're powered by AC. So in order to make this aircraft indicator work, we need to build that. When I first started researching how to get this instrument working, I discovered that World War II aircraft, B-17 bomber, were powered by AC, 100 cycles per second, 26 volts. Most of the instruments ran off that voltage. So the first order of business is to build a power supply that can deliver that. That's what we have here, and I'm gonna break it down piece by piece. I need AC, 400 cycles per second, 26 volts to make this instrument work. I picked up this signal generator, which is going to be the first step to meeting this power specification. So I am going to set it to 400 cycles per second like that, and turn it on. And you can see it. Um, it has an amplitude knob right here, which is going to help me um, adjust the voltage. So let's just set it right there for a minute. Frequency, of course, is 1 over wavelength. So if you do the division, it says that the wavelength at 400 cycles per second should be about 2.5 milliseconds. And if you get this thing to hold still, peak to peak, you see it's right at 2.5 milliseconds. So... Wow, when you turn this thing over, you see this amp and all connector. It's a four wire connector. And I was able to purchase that from amp and all. And there it is. And so let's get started here. It's keyed, so you have to put it in correctly. Put that in. Tighten it up. Remember, I talked about a self synchronizing motor generator combination, cell sin. Half of it's in there. The other half is in this little synchronous motor that I was also able to pick up for conductor. And together they work to make whatever happens on this rotor be indicated on that meter. So that's what we're gonna make work.
just to make things easier to visualize, I made this little arrow. And I'm going to mount it on top of this rotor that will allow us to visualize this direction pointer in association with this direction indicator. I'm also going to mount it in this little plastic bottle so that it will stand up by itself. I'll be back. Okay, let's put the pieces together, turn this thing on and see if it works. First thing to do is turn on the signal generator and we're going to set that to 400 cycles per second. And there we go. And start it up. The output from that comes over the audio amplifier, boosts it to 26 volts, sends the output to this terminal strip. There's my probe for my oscilloscope and we can confirm that we're at 26 volts, 400 cycles per second. Okay, this thing should be working. Let's test it. All right. You can see that the meter follows zero. <laughs> we are in business. The navigator would use this to point at a radio station using a loop antenna, directional antenna. And that would be one reference point. And then he would have a compass reference line and where those two lines met would be his location. So there we go. Well, now that the radio compass is working, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. I don't actually have a B-17 bomber that needs one. So I started thinking, and the little duck gave me an idea. This would be a great wind direction indicator. So I'm going to create some wind with these two hair dryers. And we'll go from there. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed my radio compass demo.